Hello and welcome to the section of the Algebra Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to tackle something incredibly important and that is called how to add and subtract real numbers. Now don't forget a real number in math is basically just a broad term that means lots of numbers. Negative numbers, positive numbers, uh, and everything in between and we have talked about that before. So what we're going to be doing in this section basically is learning how to add and subtract negative and positive numbers. And I have to say, it is really, really at this point that a lot of students start to have problems with algebra. Because, you know, when you're in second grade, you learn how to add and subtract. It's not a big deal. It's not hard. You learn how to multiply and divide. It's not hard. It's okay. And then suddenly you get to algebra or pre-algebra and you start talking about these negative numbers and it confuses people. And so that's when a lot of students start to have some, some basic problems. And then they try to punch through it and go on to the next section and quickly realize that you can't get anywhere in algebra unless you know how to deal with these negative numbers. So make sure when you watch this material here that you not only watch it, but that you truly, truly understand what it's doing and you can do it for yourself. Because I can promise you, if you spend an extra 20 or 30 minutes or an extra hour learning this and practicing this, then when we get into equations, when we get into other things later, it's not going to be a big deal because you already understand how to handle it. So a lot of what we're going to do here is review second grade math, first grade math, how to add, subtract, and we're just going to add the twist of what a negative number is. Now for those of you who are watching this that are a little bit confused as to what a negative number really is, let's give a little bit of a refresher. Here in my hand I have one pencil, or one pen, and if I grab another guy I have two markers, right? These are two markers in my hand. So we call that number two. This is something you've dealt with all the time. Two jelly beans, two pencils, two markers, right? But what you haven't really totally said out loud to yourself is really this is called positive two, right? Anything you have is a positive number. And that's just from first grade or from kindergarten. If you have 10 cars, it's really called positive 10. If you have three houses, it's positive three houses, right? Now, if I don't have these guys, but I actually owe you something, right? If you are a second person standing next to me and I actually owe you some of these pens, right? Then I don't have, let's say I owe you two pens. I don't actually have two pens, but I keep track of the fact that I owe you two pens by calling it negative two. That's one very, very easy way to talk about the difference between positive and negative. When I have positive two of something, it means I have them in my hand. If I have negative three paper clips, it means I don't have any paper clips. I actually owe somebody else paper clips. The negative just kind of keeps track of the fact that I don't own those. I kind of owe that to you. So if you buy a house for so much money, then you kind of have you know, negative because you owe the bank that much money. It's not money you have, it's money you owe someone else. So that's what really a negative number is. So when we start adding positive and negative numbers together, we're combining those two concepts together. So there are a few simple, simple rules that we can deal with when we're adding positive and negative uh, numbers together. And let's write these here. What I'm going to do is write the rules down. Uh, they're very, very simple. I'm going to put them up here. And we're going to do a lot of practice here, all right? We're going to do so many problems that you're going to start to go a little bit cross-eyed, but make sure you understand them all because practice is the only way you can get good at this stuff. So let's start off with things that I know that you will know. If we're adding numbers together, we're adding numbers together, then a positive number, when we add it to another positive number, that's what the, the pluses mean, we have a positive number and we add it to another positive number, what we are definitely going to get is a positive number back. This is something you already know. Two pencils plus two pencils is four pencils. You know, each number is positive. This is something you already know from your basic elementary school. Positive two pencils plus positive two pencils is positive four pencils. Two plus two is four. So when you have a positive number and you're adding it to a positive number, then you do it exactly as you've always done addition, you know, your whole life. So that's not anything new. Now let's look at a different case. Let's say I have a negative number and I'm adding it to another negative number. What am I going to get? What is the sign of the answer going to be? The sign of the answer in that case is going to be negative. Negative plus negative is always going to give you negative. These are things that are always true. If you have a positive number and you add it to a positive number, you will always get a positive answer. 
If you have a negative number and you add it to another negative number, you will always get a negative number. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense. Because if you think about negative numbers as owing somebody, let's say I owe this person $5, okay? And then I also owe this other person five more dollars. How much do I owe altogether? Well, negative five plus negative five. I mean, if I owe this guy money and I owe this person money, then altogether I should owe somebody you know, more money. Five plus five, ten dollars. I'm gonna owe ten dollars altogether. That would be negative ten. So when I owe somebody and I, I add it to something else I owe, the resulting answer should always be negative because I'm still gonna owe people money altogether when I add them together. And that's always true of negative numbers. When you take a negative and you add it to another negative, you're always going to get a negative number. So you see, these two are super easy. These are so easy to understand. This first one is what you already know from first grade. The second one, yeah, you have to talk about negative numbers a little, but once you get that, you can understand that if I owe somebody money, I owe this guy money, I owe this guy money, I owe this guy money, these are all negative numbers. If I add them together, I'm going to owe all these people the sum of that, which is gonna be negative, because I owe, I have a, a, a net that I owe people. The only time that it gets a little bit interesting is when I'm adding together a positive with a negative, okay? Maybe I've got positive three plus negative two, or positive one plus negative six, or something like that. If I, if I'm, if I have, take a positive number and I'm trying to add to it a negative number, and the answer, as far as what the sign is gonna be, is it could be positive, it could be negative. And you don't know until you look at the specific problem. And that's all I'm really gonna say here because you're gonna get this through a lot of examples. I'm gonna show you how to determine the answer. But the bottom line is, folks, these are the rules of adding and subtracting real numbers. And that's it, there's, no more, there's nothing else to it. If you're adding a positive number to a positive number, you're always going to get a positive number. If you're adding a negative number to a negative number, you're always gonna get a negative number. And if the signs are different, right? Positive plus negative, or if it's negative plus positive, if the signs are different and you're adding them together, then the answer could be either one, positive or negative, and that's just gonna depend on the problem. And I'm gonna show you how to figure that out in a bulletproof way. So this is how we're gonna do it. So let's go ahead and start to apply some of this stuff, and we're going to work our way up. Let's talk about an easy problem. Let's say we have four plus eight. What is that gonna equal? Well, this is from you know second grade math, right? This is a positive number plus a positive number. The signs of these guys are the same, positive and positive. They're both positive, so the answer we know is gonna be positive. What do you think the answer is? Eight plus four, you know that is going to be 12, and it's a positive number because from common sense, right? Four pencils plus eight pencils is gonna give us 12 pencils, but also from our rules up here, positive plus positive is always going to give us positive, right? So that's pretty simple. All right, now let's do a, a slightly different problem. What if we have negative three plus negative seven. Now I'm putting them in parentheses, mostly to not confuse you. If I take the parentheses away, then you might confuse the plus with the negative here. So right now I'm just wrapping it in parentheses to tell you, you have negative three and you're adding to it negative seven. And so you look up here and you say, well, negative with another negative, you add them together, you always get a negative answer. So you know right off the bat that you're going to have a negative answer. What do you think this answer is gonna be? If I have three pencils and it's negative, what does that mean? It means I don't actually have three pencils. I owe someone else three pencils. Same thing here. I don't actually have seven pencils. I owe someone else seven pencils. So all together, how much do I owe? Well, it's gonna be three plus seven. That's gonna be 10 pencils. But it's not positive 10 because I don't actually have these. It's negative 10. The negative means I owe all together. I owe someone or all these people, I owe them all together 10 pencils. The negative. Uh, takes care of, of helping us remember that. So the short answer is, by looking at these two examples, the way you handle addition in an algebra, basically, if the sign of the numbers are the same, in this case they're both positive, you just add the numbers together. You get 12, and the sign of the answer is always going to be positive, because positive plus positive is positive, just according to our rule. If you're adding two negative numbers, you still add the numbers together, 3 plus 7, giving us 10, but the sign is negative because negative plus negative always gives us negative. So the bottom line is, if the sign of our numbers are the same, we just add the numbers together. That's all we do. I mean, this is second, this is first grade math. If the sign of these numbers are the same, we add them together. The sign, we have to kind of look at what we're doing here. These are both negative, 
So according to this rule, it's going to be negative. Okay? And another way to look at this, another way to visualize this, is to look at our number line. Okay? Because this is something we're not going to do for every problem, but it's something that can be nice to, to look at. Let's say this is zero, and the positive numbers are going off to the right, positive one, positive two, positive three, and so on. But here I have negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, negative ten, negative eleven, negative twelve, negative thirteen, negative fourteen, and so on. All right, so the way this would be, this would be negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, negative 10, negative 11, like that. So how do we handle, how do we represent the subtraction? Well, when we have negative three plus negative seven, right, that means that we start at negative three, because that's the first number. So we're starting here at negative three, which is the left-hand side of zero, and we're adding to it not a positive number, we're adding to it actually a negative number. In other words, we're taking away more. So if we owe somebody three pencils and we owe somebody else seven more, then we're, we owe people more, so we have to go more left because we're digging ourselves deeper into the hole, so to speak, of owing people. So we owe somebody seven more. So we count to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we land on negative 10, which is why was our answer. So when you add negative numbers, you're going to the left on the number line. If you add positive numbers, you're going to the right on the number line. So the answer is negative 10. It matches what we got. Now this number line business is useful. It's great to represent and to learn, but it's not good when you're solving lots of algebra problems because you don't want to draw a number line all the time. But it's nice to kind of represent it. So occasionally we'll draw it on, on the board to kind of help illustrate. All right. so. Let's go ahead and continue working some more. We've only done a couple of these guys. We're going to do a lot so that you get very comfortable with what we're doing. Here we have done positive plus positive give us positive. Here we've done negative plus negative gives us negative. Here's going to be our first uh, problem where we're going to do um, 6 plus negative 4. So see, this is different than all the other ones because we have a positive and we're adding to it a negative number. So here we look up here and we see, okay, if, we're, if we have different signs, then the answer could be either one. And I told you a minute ago, I'll show you how to figure that out. Let me show you how to do it. The bottom line is, if you're adding together two numbers that have different signs like this, okay, different signs like this, then what you do is you always, you kind of forget about this sign for just a second, and you, you subtract these numbers from one another. So 6 minus 4, uh, let me switch over here, is going to give you 2. Okay, that's going to be the number. Now to get the actual sign, I told you it could be plus or minus. To get the sign, all you do is you look at the two numbers you were dealing with, and you figure out which one's larger in terms of absolute value. Well, I have a 6 here and I have a negative 4 here. So the larger number, as far as absolute value goes, is 6. This one, and this one's positive. And it, the answer basically takes the same sign as the larger number, the larger absolute value number. So the answer is positive 2. So again, I've just taught you, without writing a definition down, how to do this addition when you have different signs of numbers. If you have different signs, in this case positive plus negative, you always just subtract the numbers, you forget about the sign for a second, you subtract the numbers, you get the answer, and the sign takes the same sign as the larger number, the larger absolute value number. Let's do a couple more, and you'll, you'll see how this works. It's actually very simple. I've seen books explain this lots of ways. I really do believe this is the easiest way to do it. Let's say 9 plus negative 11. Alright, so here we have a positive plus a negative. We have different signs of our numbers. So what you do is you forget about the sign for a second, and you subtract these numbers in the way that you did from first grade. So we have 11, and we subtract 9. You, do, you, doesn't, you just basically take the bigger number and subtract the smaller. So forget about that. 11 minus 9 would be 2. And then to figure out what the sign is, you look at what you had, and you figure out what was the bigger number absolute value-wise. Well, I have a negative 11. I have a positive 9. This is the larger number in terms of absolute value. So it takes a negative sign and that's a negative 2. Okay, so again, you forget about the sign, subtract the numbers, get your number, 
And then to get the sign, you kind of go back and look at whichever one was biggest as far as the absolute value. In other words, which one had the largest number uh, here, not taking into account the sign, and then the answer is going to match that sign, basically. Now again, we're not going to do this for every problem, but we'll go ahead and do this guy on the number line to show you what's going on here. So if I have a number line, something like this, then my zero point might be here, all right? And then I might have, you know, negative one, negative two, something like this. And then I might have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So let me label these guys real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So how would we represent this addition? Well, we start at the number nine. So we look ahead. Here is the number nine right here. And we're adding to it a negative number. So because we're adding negative, we kind of go to the left on the number line. Okay? If we're adding positive number, we go to the right and we get bigger. But since we're adding a negative number, we go to the left 11 units. So count with me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 units to the left. The answer we get is negative 2 and that matches with everything. So you see, you could draw a number line here for every problem, but it gets cumbersome after a while. What if I gave you, you know, negative 154 minus, you know, 3, or minus 25? Well then, to write that on a number line is a real pain. What if I gave you a 1 half minus 3 fourths? Then you have to write fractions on a number line. So you really need to learn the rules, and that's going to help you get faster, faster, faster. And we're going to do a lot more problems to show you that. So again, let me recap here before we go on and solve some more problems. Positive number plus positive number always gives you a positive number. Negative number plus negative number always gives you a negative number. You just simply add the absolute values here, okay, to get the number. Uh, if you have mixed where you're adding positive to negative and also if you flipped it around negative to positive, it's the same thing. You ignore the sign. You always subtract these guys. You got the two here. You always subtract these guys. 11 minus 9, you always get the 2 here. The sign of the answer is going to match the sign of whatever is larger on this side as far as absolute value goes. So we have a positive here because this one's bigger, and we have a negative here because this one is bigger. Now one final thing I want to say before I go on to the final section, or I should say to, to the rest of our problems, is sort of an aside, I want you to start thinking about it as, as we go along. It'll help you if you start realizing this a little bit a little bit sooner rather than later. Okay, what we can do, you don't have to do this, but I want to make sure you understand. Here we have three plus a negative seven. And I'm writing it this way to be clear, right? Because I'm adding a negative number. But this can be written exactly as negative three minus seven. These two things are the same thing. Basically, anytime you see plus a negative like this, plus negative, in that order, plus a negative, you can just kind of forget about the plus sign and write it as minus. So negative three minus seven. Same thing as over here. This guy right here, let me draw a little arrow. See, I have a plus minus. I can write this as six minus four, and it's exactly the same thing. Same thing here, I have plus minus. Let me go ahead and write that over here, like that. Here as nine, I can write it as nine minus 11. So if you see on a piece of paper negative 3 plus 7, then you can, in your head, you can look at it this way. If you see something like this, you can look at it this way. The reverse is true. If you see 6 minus 4, you can always write it as 6 plus a negative 4. In my opinion, early on, it's easier to watch and view it in terms of the way I'm writing it here. But in your book, you're going to quickly be able to start seeing things like this, and you're going to be expected to know that th these are the same thing. Notice that it is the same thing. If I start with six units of something, right, six pencils, and I subtract four away, right, the answer is two. That comes from first grade math. That's exactly what I get. But if I start out with nine pencils and I try to subtract 11, well, I'm going to get to zero, but then I'm going to have to subtract two more, so I'm going to get negative two, and that was our answer. So writing it like this is exactly the same as writing it like this. The bottom line is anytime you see plus a negative, you can always write that as just subtraction. And you can do the reverse, whatever is easier for you to remember. So let's go ahead and continue working some examples. What we're going to do now, you know, I've spent a lot of time 
showing you and talking and talking and talking and talking for every example. What we're going to do now is just bury this in your mind as far as being just absolutely on the tip of your tongue. So we're going to work a lot of problems here. Feel free to pause the video after I put a problem on the board, try to work it out for yourself and then press play and see if you can get the answer because you know, you can watch this all day, but until you can do it yourself, it's kind of meaningless. So let's let's go ahead and do this here. We're gonna do a lot rapid fire. I'm gonna rapid, I'm gonna erase the board, and we're gonna do a lot of these problems rapid fire to make sure you fully understand this concept. 